let's talk a little bit about Italian horror films. I'm a big fan of Italian horror. They're pretty well known when it comes to exploitation films and grindhouse cinema. However, even though they're loved by us grindhouse junkies, I still feel they're very underrated. So today I decided to put together a list of my top 10 favorite Italian horror films. If you're a fan of the genre, maybe you'll see something that you agree with. Or if you've never watched an Italian horror film, maybe it will give you the urge to see some. So let's just get right down to it, my top 10 favorite Italian horror films. Number 10, Black Sunday. Directed by Mario Bava, who many consider to be the original Italian horror master, I feel that Black Sunday is one of the lost black and white classics. One that deserves to be up there with such films as Dracula and Frankenstein. It's hard to find a horror movie that can be considered both beautiful and frightening at the same time. But Bava always seems to capture that with the use of his set design. He really loved to show off his sets, really loved to show off his backgrounds. Which makes the world he created in this film seem that much more alive. The movie feels like a really dark fairy tale. But not one you would tell your children, it has a lot more violence and adult themes. It's also a movie that I really can't see being in color. I think the black and white really adds to the atmosphere. If it was in color, I don't think it would be as effective as it is. All in all, I feel that Black Sunday is a testament to how black and white films will never die. Number 9, Beyond the Darkness. It's a tragic story of love. A young man loses the love of his life and doesn't know how to let her go. Throw in some suggested necrophilia and you're in business. It's about a young man whose girlfriend dies, and instead of letting her rest in peace, he chooses to exhume the body and take it home. After preserving the corpse, he wants to keep her forever. But that doesn't stop him from interacting with other young women and then... murdering them. The movie has plenty of gore and sleaze to leave any exploitation fan happy. And I admit it's pretty icky to see somebody getting turned on by a corpse. But I like a film that shows the deterioration of somebody who loses somebody that they love and then can't let them go. In all fairness, it's a story about somebody losing the only thing that's keeping them sane. To me, the gore, nudity, and sleaze is just the cherry on the top of a very interesting movie about someone's descent into madness. Not your typical love story, but one I will not be able to forget anytime soon. Yes, my little friend is better now, I can tell. Much better. Number 8, Deep Red. Before you had the American slasher films like Friday the 13th and Halloween, you had the Italian giallo films, which are essentially Italian slasher films. In fact, some of the kills in some of our favorite slasher films were inspired by kills in giallo films. And Dario Argento's Deep Red is definitely one of the best. It just sets such a great mood and such a creepy atmosphere. And one of the best things about it is how they psychologically profile the killer. This is a person who experienced something very traumatic in their life, and with each killing, they have to sort of recreate that event in some way. And one way is by playing this creepy-ass music. It's a prime example of what makes Giallo films so great. Creepy music combined with unfamiliar locations. If you're a fan of slasher films, Deep Red is the perfect Giallo to start with. Number 7, Eaten Alive. One of the subgenres that Italians were known for was the Amazon cannibal films. And Eaten Alive is not the first film that people think of when it comes to the genre. It gets a lot of flack mainly because it uses stock footage from other cannibal films. And while most people didn't like that, I actually had fun with it. I like trying to pick and choose which movie the stock footage was from. But the main thing I love about this film is even though it's grotesque, it has sort of a campiness that I like. I also like how it's a cannibal movie mixed with a cult movie. It's the best of both worlds. You get tension from this cult that's being brainwashed by some maniac, and you also get tension from the cannibals outside. If you can look past the stock footage, you might be surprised. You may find yourself enjoying the movie as much as I did. Those devils want to see me locked up in a prison cell, but they'll never get to do it. I will not leave my people without their leader. Have them prepare that mixture, Dick, with the fang of the cobra. Roses are red, violets are blue, but the iris is the flower that will mean the end of you. Number six, as you can already guess, is Suspiria. 
more Dario Argento for you. Suspirio was one of the last horror films to use Technicolor, and it really shows. The colors are just in your face the entire time, especially the red from the blood. Not to mention it has some of the most unique death scenes in any horror film. Hell, the first 15 minutes alone are worth seeing the movie. Plus, I always make it a point to talk about good soundtracks in horror movies. And Suspiria definitely has one of the best. All of this combines into making one of the most atmospheric and most creepy horror films I've ever seen. Anybody who loves horror is doing themselves a great disservice by not seeing this movie. Than the last 12 minutes of Suspiria. Are the first 92. Number 5, Anthropophagus. I know a lot of people who like Italian horror films might not agree with me putting this ahead of Suspiria. This film suffers from being hurt by its reputation. Way back when it was put on the video nasties list by British censors. But you have to understand, these censors didn't necessarily watch every movie that they put on the video nasties list. Sometimes they just watched the trailers, sometimes they just saw the poster, and sometimes they would just hear the title and deem the movie inappropriate for people to see. And all that, plus a pretty controversial scene in the movie, have earned Anthropophagus the reputation as a very gory and fucked up horror film. And the movie does have some good gore in the last act of the film. This horror movie is a slow burn, it's a build up to the last act of the film. And I like that, I think that the movie was still interesting and atmospheric as it was building up to the final act. But I understand that it throws a few people off. I mean, even the back of the DVD box describes the movie as a fucked up horror movie and kind of controversial. Truth is, it's pretty tame compared to a lot of other stuff that's out there. But it's still one of my favorite Italian horror movies and I'm very proud to have it in my number five spot on the list. If you decide to watch it, just remember you're gonna have to be patient for the blood. Number four, Torso. Hands down, my favorite giallo film. It has everything, gore, mystery, nudity, atmosphere, and most of all, suspense. Sexuality is actually a big theme in this movie, and I respect it for that. Not only does it acknowledge the sexuality of the main characters, but it also acknowledges the sexual motivations of the killer. They make it very clear in the movie that murder is a sexual thing for this guy. And let's face it, that's the case for many real-life serial killers. It just makes the movie all the more unsettling, knowing that death gets this guy off. But what really makes this movie is the suspense. There's this one moment in the last act that totally made the film for me. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, I'm just gonna say that it's one of the most nail-biting climaxes I've seen in any horror movie. There's really nothing more you can say except... Torso, it saturates the screen with terror. Number three, Zombie, directed by the master of arterial spray, Lucio Fulci. If you love blood and you're a fan of gore, Lucio Fulci's your man. And you get plenty in this movie. Fulci's the man who turned bloodshed into an art form. But good gore is not the only reason to recommend this movie, it's also beautifully shot. The underwater sequences are amazing. One of the most memorable scenes in the movie is where a zombie fights a shark. And here's the big thing, they use a real tiger shark. Admittedly, they kinda doped it up, but still, this is a man in full zombie garb fighting a real tiger shark. With nothing to supply him air, by the way. That's dedication. All in all, Zombie is a great horror movie that will keep any gore fan satisfied. Whatever it is, it makes the dead stand up and walk. Number two, The Beyond. That's right, Fulci gets three and two on this list. Pretty much what I said for Zombie is also true for this movie. But I rank it higher just because of how insane the plot is. It's about a woman who buys this new hotel in Louisiana, but then finds out it's built over one of the seven gateways of hell. And then you get balls to the wall mayhem. What this movie has will make your head spin. It has blood, eye gouging, killer spiders, ghostly blind women, zombies. It just has enough gore to make your mouth water. And it's practical effects too, which I will always support over CGI. If you want a fun horror movie with plenty of gore and kind of a crazy plot, all I can say is The Beyond. Woe be unto him who opens one of the seven gateways to hell. Because through that gateway, evil will invade the world. And now for my number one pick. Let me explain myself before you condemn me. 
Hip number one, Cannibal Holocaust. I really should clarify, I do not like nor do I approve of the animal cruelty in this movie, and I never will. In fact, when I first watched this movie back in high school, I only got halfway through it and then refused to watch the rest of it. But that was before my views on censorship were fully realized, and as I matured, I decided to go back and watch the movie again. And I just can't deny the effect that the movie had on me. It made me feel depressed, it made me feel sick to my stomach, it left a bad taste in my mouth. And in all fairness, that's what the movie was trying to do. For those of you who don't know, the movie is about a doctor who goes into the Amazon jungle to find a missing film crew that was doing a documentary on cannibal tribes. The first half of the movie is him trying to find the film crew and then finding out that they died. And the second half of the film is him watching the footage of the film crew seeing the horrible acts they committed which led to their murders. The movie shows some pretty brutal and disturbing stuff and people should keep that in mind if they decide to see this. A lot of people, including the filmmakers, say that Cannibal Holocaust had a message. And many people debate on whether that was the intentions of the film to this very day. Me? I think that the message was intended, but I don't think it was the movie's first priority. I think the main thing they wanted to do was make a shocking horror movie. I also feel whatever message they were trying to get across is hurt by the animal cruelty. And again, for those who don't know, there are a few scenes in this movie where animals are actually killed on camera. And even though I don't think it's right, I can look past it because it was done at a time where quite a few movies did this and it was really a different time back then. I do feel that this is one of the most effective horror movies ever made and it really does what a horror movie is supposed to do. In all fairness, it horrified me a lot more than other horror movies I've seen. And that's why I gave it my number one spot because I just can't deny how the movie made me feel. Cannibal Holocaust, a movie that I am never going to forget, no matter how hard I try. And those are my favorite Italian horror movies. Let me know what you think and put your favorites down below. Or you can make a video response to this. I'd love to see some of your favorites. I hope you enjoyed the list, and we'll see you next time.